Hello and welcome to the 10-day trend. A lot of people have been somewhat dissatisfied with the weather so far through spring. It's certainly been wetter than normal, especially in the south. We've not seen much sunshine and although temperatures have actually been slightly above normal for the time of year, it's probably not felt that warm because of the lack of sun and the rainfall. And at the same time, we've talked a lot through March and April about a south shifted jet stream. Well, here's how the jet stream's looking at the time of recording. No longer south shifted. In fact, it's going to the north of the UK. And let's run that forward through the next few days. You can see how the jet stream generally maintains that position between Scotland and Iceland and still waving about somewhat and still occasionally affecting the UK. But actually, for much of the time, it is now further north. Now, let's run that forward a little bit more and pick out a few details. Like I say, it's wriggling about across the Atlantic and across the UK at times. And on Friday, a portion of the jet stream dips south to affect much of England and Wales. And when that happens, there'll be some showers around. We'll see a few days like that over the next 10 days. But generally speaking, with the jet stream going to the north of the UK, that's where most of the low pressure systems will go, leaving the UK with high pressure. In fact, that high pressure is extending from the Azores. The Azores typically has high pressure nearby and during the next 10 days, we'll often see this extension of high pressure from the southwest from the Azores. But because the jet stream will bring these areas of low pressure, will bring these weather fronts along to the north, we're not entirely immune from cloud and rain. And so occasionally weather fronts will push into the northwest of the UK, bringing much of their rainfall to northern and western Scotland, parts of Northern Ireland, before, at times, dipping south and bringing some showers to the rest of the UK. But on the whole, because of that northward shifted jet stream, it is going to be a lot quieter than the first couple of months of spring. Now, just to prove that the jet stream is further north than normal, here's the average position of high pressure and low pressure um, for May. And you've got high pressure, as I mentioned, typically close to the Azores. In fact, just slightly south of the Azores there on average. And low pressure typically just south of Iceland. Now, over the next week or so, that high will be more to the north of the Azores, extending towards the UK, and that low will be more to the north of Iceland. So the whole pattern shifted north compared with average. And likewise with the jet stream, this is the average position of jet stream through May, extending out to North America. And then you can just about see the faint colours extending it through Ireland into Scotland and northwards. But over the next week or possibly longer, the jet stream will be pushed a little further north between Iceland and Scotland and Therefore, the jet stream is now north shifted and not so much south shifted. As you can see, as we go into Thursday morning, we're going to see that north shifted jet stream. High pressure close to the UK, bringing a lot of fine weather, but a weather front dangling in from that jet stream to bring some cloud and rain to Scotland. Some damp, drizzly weather, certainly for the northwest of Scotland, and then later in the afternoon for parts of Northern Ireland. A lot of cloud in the north and some areas of cloud further south as well, but a lot of fine weather for England and Wales. After a chilly start, actually, temperatures will respond well with the sunshine up to 18 to 20 or even 21 Celsius and a warmer day to come for the east coast because we'll have lost the North Sea wind. We'll see these westerlies return. Then the weather front does tend to make southward progress on Thursday night and it weakens as it runs into that extension of high pressure from the Azores. But with the jet stream, as you saw earlier, that branch of the jet stream also dipping south, that will enable some instability in the atmosphere, or some rising air, and so the front will break up into showers. And at the moment, the computer models are uh, differing in terms of where the showers will end up. But suffice to say, the southern half of the UK, prone to a mixture of sunny spells and scattered showers, perhaps even the odd thunderstorm breaking out. Many areas will miss those showers, though, and for Scotland, Northern England, Northern Ireland, a drier and brighter day to come with some decent sunny spells and feeling warm as well, although a cooler day to come for England and Wales because of the extra cloud cover. That front disappears on Friday night and we return to high pressure in charge generally for the start of the weekend. Lots of fine weather, but then the next weather front comes in from the northwest, again thickening up the cloud across Scotland and Northern Ireland and bringing some light and drizzly outbreaks of rain. Much of the rainfall coming through, it's running into high pressure, so it's weakening. So we're not expecting huge amounts of rain, but there will be occasional damp weather through the next few days 
for the northwestern part of the UK. And for England and Wales, actually, Saturday's looking mostly fine. You wouldn't really like the odd shower, but for the vast majority, it's sunny spells. I'm feeling warm as a result. 20, 21 Celsius in the south, mid to high teens further north. Skip forward to Sunday and very similar weather. That front's actually quite slow moving, so it's still going to bring a lot of cloud for Scotland and Northern Ireland and some outbreaks of increasingly showery rain, so a mixture of scattered showers and longer spells of rain for central and northern Scotland and parts of Northern Ireland. I think the far south of Scotland, largely dry and bright. England and Wales, sunny spells. Again, possibility, just a signal there of the odd shower, but most of these will be isolated and so they're going to be affecting not many people. And Sunday, in fact, is mostly fine in the south once again and a bit warmer, 21 Celsius or even 22 Celsius. Now, that high pressure is by this stage starting to wane in its influence somewhat. And as we go into the start of next week, there's a couple of things going on. That high pressure, you can see, is starting to push back towards the Azores. At the same time, we're going to see a weather front move once again into the northwest of the UK. But also we're likely to see an area of low pressure over the near continent to bring some thunderstorms around the start to the middle of next week across Central Europe. Now, some computer models, including the Met Office model, bring those thunderstorms in to the UK on Monday and Tuesday, an area of thundery rain affecting the southeast and some cool air as well, limiting the temperatures. But other computer models don't have it at all and keep things mostly fine in the south. So that's a question mark for the start of next week, whether we'll see some of this thundery rain that develops over the continent affecting the south and southeast of the UK. Further northwest, the story is more straightforward. We'll see the return of uh, some of these weak weather fronts to bring some cloud and intermittent outbreaks of light to moderate rain, moving through interspersed by sunny spells. You can see that high pressure is edging back towards the Azores, the more average condition for May. And if I skip forward to the end of next week, this is the most likely weather pattern. That high, again, slightly waning in its influence, but still extending a lot of fine weather towards the south of the UK. But you wouldn't rule out a few showers as the influence of that high moves away, whilst the north continues to be affected by low pressure. And at this stage, with the winds coming in a bit more from the west, it's likely to be a bit more changeable for a few days. Wednesday to Friday, for example, low pressure likely to get a bit closer to the northwest, a few more weather fronts making their way more uh, concertedly across the country, albeit as relatively weak features. And this shows up quite nicely in this graph. This shows the most likely weather pattern for each day through the rest of May. And the colours indicate different weather patterns. And this uh, yellowish colour indicates high pressure extending from the Azores. So a clear signal for that right the way through to Tuesday, possibly even Wednesday. But then these blues start to make an appearance just for a few days. And those blues indicate low pressure a bit closer to the UK, a bit more changeable with weather systems moving through. Nothing particularly unsettled however and then after that for the final few days of May these reds and oranges make an appearance and what they suggest is high pressure either centered over the UK or just to the north of the UK this is for the final day in May and so after a bit more of a changeable spell later next week but again nothing desperately unsettled it looks like for the final few days of May we'll have high pressure back in charge but this time not so much extending from the Azores but more across the UK, certainly across northern parts of the UK, so perhaps more settled for Scotland and Northern Ireland at the end of May. And some more of a continental influence further south, whether that be from uh, some warmer air or from some thunderstorms or a bit of both. We'll have to wait and see. But this looks like the most likely weather pattern for the final few days of May higher pressure, so a lot of fine weather. So certainly a remarkable difference compared with much of spring so far. A lot of quiet weather to come over the next week and a half.